Hi my friends and welcome back to my channel. Now, when I was a young boy, I used to go to my grandparents' house after school to do my homework and my grandparents had high expectations, but sometimes I was a bit slow and when I was doing mathematics with my grandfather, he would sometimes say, oh Paul, come on, use your loaf. Now, through context, I understood what he meant. The problem is, nobody else outside Britain would understand. And for example, maybe later I could be drawing a picture and my grandmother might look over my shoulder and say, can I have a butcher's? Again, I understood what she meant through context. But only much later, when I became a linguist and really studied English, I realized that what they were talking about was cockney rhyming slang, and that is today's video. It is based on popular requests by you guys because my video on Cockney English is doing very well and so many people have sent me messages saying please give us examples of Cockney rhyming slang. So I will tell you how it's formed, you know, where it's from, plus some really, really great examples in the second part. But my friends, I warn you now, the examples in the second part are rather rude and that's why they're my favourite. So if you are a bit conservative or ooh la la, then you can watch this bit, the intelligent part, before we move on to the unintelligent part in the second half. All right, so let's get on with it. Maybe you've heard this expression, to rabbit on about something, and it's very common in everyday English. So if you rabbit on about something, you're talking and talking and talking and talking uh, rubbish, basically, and it's Cockney rhyming slang. For example, rabbit, rabbit and pork, pork sounds like talk. So it's like talking and talking and talking and talking. For example, to bring home the bread, Bread and honey is the expression. What does honey sound like to you? To bring home the bread. Yeah, bread and honey. Honey sounds like money. To bring home the money. So bread means money. I, if you're already confused, I really apologize, but that's Cockney rhyming slang. So where does it come from? Well, there's some debate about the origins of Cockney rhyming slang. No one's exactly sure, but they think it's like the 18th century where maybe uh, some people formed a cryptolect. So that's like speaking in code. So maybe the police wouldn't understand or maybe people working in markets could communicate so the public wouldn't understand if they were being cheated out of money, for example. But again, no one knows exactly for sure. So even if you check online, you'll get lots of different uh, opinions. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in some examples, how it's formed, and later my very rude examples. Now. There are several variants. Usually, when you want to create a, uh, some Cockney rhyming slang, you take the first word in an expression. Now, I told you already, butchers. Okay, let me have a butchers. Now, I can say butchers hook. Like, you know, like when they hang meat on a hook to let the blood drip out. Hook sounds like look. So what butchers means here is look. So let me have a butchers, let me have a look. Let me see what you're doing. Now, again, as British people, we're used to this, especially people from London, but outside, people have no clue what we're talking about. But that's the beauty of it. However, sometimes we can take the whole expression, so not just the first word. So, very, very common, Ruby Murray. So we can say, I'm going to have a Ruby Murray tonight, which means Ruby Murray, Murray, sounds like curry. So you might have noticed, you always take the second word in the expression to form that rhyming slang, okay? Now, if you watch, for example, films like Green Street Hooligans, The Limey, uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch, uh, typically sort of British films based in London, you will hear a lot of Cockney rhyming slang. Even in Ocean's Eleven, I can't remember the character, uh, his name, who does it, but he tries to use it a lot. And even in a scene, they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Now, can you make up anything when it comes to Cockney rhyming slang? Well, the answer is, well, yes, you can. You can make up anything you want if you follow that structure. But the problem is there are standards. So, for example, we have, like, uh, to rabbit on about something, to bring home the bread, use your loaf, let me have a butcher's, um, trouble and strife, as I'll explain later. So if you wanted to make up your own version, people might not understand you because it's just, well, not used. So therefore, we do have standards, and I'm going to show you 10 in a minute. And those are the ones that you really want to follow. If you look online, you will see thousands of them. But I think, honestly, people have made them up themselves. I've never heard of them. Most people have never heard of them. Uh, and I would strongly suggest that you don't do that. Just follow the standards, okay? So if you type into Google, maybe 50 top 
Cockney rhyming slang expressions, that's enough. Okay, can a learner use them? Well, you know, if you want to sort of use some of these expressions in your everyday English, I think you should be quite a high learner, like quite high level, because you need that sort of fluency, you need to sort of say it quickly, like, oh, let me have a butcher's, or come on, use your loaf, you need the intonation, you need, you know, the, the right pronunciation, uh, and you need that uh, fluency. Um, however, of course, if you're visiting London or you know some English friends if you're abroad and you want to have a laugh by showing what English you know, of course it's fine uh, to use some Cockney rhyming slang. But I, I find it strange if someone tries too hard to use it, to try and sound cool or to try and sound really Londonish, uh, then it doesn't work so well, I would say, uh, especially if the student is like elementary, it's a bit, it's a bit unusual. Now, let's move on to some very saucy examples and if you are slightly conservative uh, you can stop watching now but I'm sure most of you will continue watching. Ha -ha. Let's do it. Hi my friends and welcome back. Let's have a look through some classic examples now. You may know the cartoon The Flintstones uh, where Fred Flintstone's best friend is called Barney Rubble. Now we have taken his name and used it in Cockney rhyming slang. For example, Barney Rubble sounds like trouble. So I had some Barney last weekend at home which means Maybe I had some arguments at home with the family. Bees and honey. Honey sounds like money. Could you give me some bees so I can go and buy a drink at the bar? So give me some money so I can buy a drink. China plate. Plate sounds like mate. All right, my old China, I haven't seen you in a long time. Actually, that's a common one. Dog and bone. Phone. Could you pass me the dog and bone, please? Because someone needs to answer it. We have Jimmy Riddle. Riddle sounds like piddle. Now, if you've never heard of the word piddle before, it's kind of a soft word meaning to go to the toilet. So you can say, oh, I'm just going to pop to the jimmy for a few minutes. Raspberry tart, tart sounds like fart. Now, if you don't know the word fart, it's like when gas comes out of your body, but not from here, it's the other end. Now, I'll tell you something interesting about this one. When I was growing up, um, and I used to do this to my friends and family, <laughs> We call it to blow raspberries. That's what it is, to blow raspberries. And I had no idea as I was growing up that actually what the expression that I used was Cockney rhyming slang. It was so standard, it was just so ingrained into me. I had no clue. But yes, it's like a farting sound. And you blow raspberries. So here we go. Trouble and strife. Strife sounds like wife. So if you say, I had some trouble and strife last weekend, it means you had a problem with your wife. Pete Tong, Tong sounds like wrong. Everything's just gone Pete Tong in the economy. Tom Tit, shit. I think your opinion on that is absolute Tom Tit. Your opinion on it is absolutely shit. Of course, I would never say that to someone because I'm nice, unless they annoy me. Now, my favorite one, and again, going back to Paul Barney Rubble, where we take a like, lovable, famous, popular cartoon character and turn it into something disgusting, which is so typically British. Uh, do you know Thomas the Tank Engine, the little blue train that can talk? Um, it's very famous in Britain and some other countries. Now, we've taken the word Tommy Tank, and Tank sounds like wank, which means to masturbate. So, unfortunately, yes, another cartoon character is associated with masturbation. So, I could say I was having a Tommy when my mother walked in, and it was rather embarrassing. So, those are some classic examples to get you started. Um, again, be careful when you use them. I hope that was useful. You can leave some comments below or even share your own examples that you've come across and we'd be happy to respond to that. So please subscribe, give a thumbs up and I will see you again soon, my friends. Thank you very much.